Thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. And today, talking about this very important topic is uh, about software supply chain. I will tell you about first what it is, and uh, second, I will tell you about what is very important uh, for us to, to secure our software supply chain, to understand that this uh, is a fundamental uh, matter, that is a fundamental concern that we need to, to take very seriously, and that we need to adopt best practices in order to mitigate software supply chain attacks. Uh, but first, I would like to start talking about the software development life cycle. This is where everything uh, begins, uh, as we know. Uh, it starts with a team of developers that are commonly assisted today by bots also. Maybe you use uh, GitHub Compiler or something. But these developers, they write source code. They write code that is understandable by humans. And this is just the beginning of the journey. Because then, after the code is written by developers, then it goes into a build pipeline. Uh, and what you can see there is, uh, in black, is the processes. The source code goes into the build, which compiles the code, then tests the code, and then bundles the whole application into uh, what it is an executable binary. And notice that during this process of compilation and testing, the, uh, uh, the code that is uh, written by the developers needs to use external code that comes from package registers. These are package managers that also contain code that is necessary to build, to compile, to test our application. And then, once you get the binary, then it goes to a, into a deployment pipeline. And in this deployment pipeline, again, there is code that is fetched from package registers. And it doesn't matter which kind of deployment pipeline do you have. It doesn't matter if it is deployed to the cloud, it is deployed locally on premises. At the end, you need to reuse code somehow because Maybe you are using Docker, or maybe you need uh, an operating system to hold your whole application. And, and what do you see on the, on the right side is the final, uh, the final application that is actually used by the, the, the clients, the customers of our, of our project. And if you notice, in purple is the code that was written initially by the developers, but in black is all the necessary code that is, uh, that is used by our application in order to run, in order to provide uh, actual functionality to the end users. And this is not the end of the story, because if you notice, only in a small part of the, of the application is it was actually written by the developers, but the rest in black are dependencies. Dependencies that are also written by other teams of developers who write, implement the functionalities, then it goes through the similar build pipeline, then the application is deployed also into, uh, into the package registers, and at the end, this is what we are reusing. We are reusing a very complex set of dependencies which are developed by other teams. And as you can imagine, uh, this creates uh, uh, this creates issues, and, and this is what we talk about the, when we mention about the software supply chain. It's the set of all the dependencies and tools that are necessary in order to implement, in order to deploy, in order to uh, give value to our customers. And the fact that these dependencies are complex, this is a, a major issue for us. What you can see there in the, in the figure, this is the dependency tree of a project. It's a very popular project. Uh, what you see in the root of the tree is the core module of Apache Spark. Apache Spark is a, is a framework for, if you know Java, is a, it runs in the JVM. It's a, it's a framework for the analysis uh, of uh, big data. And what do you see is that the dependency tree is very complex. So if you, if you can see, that it's impossible to recognize the dependencies there. There are uh, actually more than uh, 500 of them. And uh, the problem is that, let's say that our initial application is using, uh, is using a Spark. 
And then suddenly, we will pull all this dependency tree and we will put it inside our application, inside of our code. And the question is, what happens if one node, which is an artifact that was deployed somewhere in the package register, what if this artifact is compromised somehow, somewhere, but someone? How can we prevent this to happen? How can we fix it? So this talk is about it. It's about the problems that emerge when you have a pretty large software supply chain of artifacts, and you need to secure them. You need to make sure that you don't have vulnerabilities, that you don't have issues. And I'm going to give you practical insights for you as developers to prevent this kind of issues. Notice that I say prevent, because uh, actually uh, it's, very, uh, it's very difficult to completely avoid. But, uh, but prevention is the, is the start. So this has happened. What I showed you before uh, is something that happened before in the past. So uh, for example, in, uh, in November 2018, uh, the event stream, which is an uh, NPM package, is a, is a library in NPM, it was compromised by uh, malicious actors who managed to push malicious code, malware, inside the library by just contributing on GitHub because the code was open source. So he just pushed the code there, and the, the intention of the code was to compromise uh, Bitcoin wallets. And this causes so, so many issues. And uh, another example very well known is the SolarWind. And SolarWind is a US company. And uh, this case is interesting because in this case, the whole CI CD pipeline of the company was compromised by, uh, by an exploit that activated a few weeks after. And then uh, the exploit just uh, actually took uh, customers' data, sensitive data. And probably uh, all of you, I mean, if you are, in the, if you are developers and you uh, write Java code, you may know about the Log4J vulnerability, which was the discovered uh, in 2022. And, uh, and yes, it affected all the major banks because uh, most of the banks somehow run some Java. And if you so, you run some Java, then the, uh, at some point there is low 4 j some, in some nodes, some uh, uh, very deep down in the dependency tree of your applications. So this is a serious concern, uh, as I mentioned. And uh, there are many cybersecurity strategies that were the, uh, that I have been uh, adopted and uh, that are starting with the vulnerabilities, with the software uh, supply chain being compromised. Uh, for example, the, the White House executive order is pretty serious. In 2021, they realized after the solar wind that, okay, we need to take action. This is very serious. We don't want our applications to be compromised the, this way. Open source software security is a thing, is very important. And, uh, and the EU cyber, cyber security strategy uh, in 2020 uh, started just before, which is uh, also an example that the governments are taking very, very seriously uh, the case of securing software supply chains. And the question is, what can we do? Well, I will give you three uh, strategies, three mitigations, actionable things that you can do in order to prevent uh, software supply chain attacks. The first is to know your dependencies. So for you to know your dependencies, first you need to uh, list them. You need to know which dependencies do you have directly, but also in indirectly, because there are direct dependencies, transit dependencies. So in the case of Java, in, uh, if you build using Maven as your package manager, uh, there are plugins for that. And I suggest you to start with the Maven dependency plugin with the goal Kalec tree, which uh, we give you the whole tree of dependencies. And if you want to go further, then you can uh, start looking at SBOOM. SBOOM uh, stands for the software bit of materials, which is a way to list all the artifacts, all the software that you need to deploy your application to your customers. And the way it works is that it hashes all the packages. And every single package, we have a unique hash. And in this way, you will know exactly if you are uh, delivering to your customers uh, the software that you think that you are. So it's a way to ensure that you are uh, actually using the software that you think you are without being compromised. 
And uh, I recommend Cyclone DX for this, which is a very popular project uh, that which also contains uh, 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 ways to run uh, for Maven and for Java. And uh, in another life, uh, I forget to mention, but I used to be a researcher. And we, this year, we published a paper uh, titled Challenges of Producing Software Bill of Materials for Java. Uh, you have the QR code if you are interested. Uh, the paper was published in IEEE uh, Security and Privacy. It's a, it's a, it's a serious magazine. And uh, I recommend you to read if you are interested in, uh, in Spoons. And uh, the second uh, strategy that I would like to, to, to mention is updating your dependencies. So this is very important. Once you know which dependencies do you have, the next step is to update them. And by updating, I mean uh, using automatic tools to, to do that. Not just uh, doing manually, no, but actually implementing uh, tools in your CI-CD pipeline, for example, uh, Dependabot, which is the official uh, bot for dependency update on GitHub, uh, Renovate, which was developed by a developer from, from Stockholm. Uh, his name is uh, Rhys Hacking. And uh, also, you can adopt the OWASP dependency checker, which uh, analyzes the security of, uh, of all your packages. And, uh, uh, this topic is very broad, but uh, in case if you are interested, we also published another paper in, uh, last year uh, in IEEE Computer. And the title of the paper is The Multivision Dollar Software Supply Chain of Ethereum. And in this paper, we analyze uh, the, the nodes in the Ethereum ecosystem that runs on Java. So we took all these applications, which are very complex, by the way, uh, they run the whole Ethereum blockchain. So can you imagine? It's, it's very complex and it's very critical because they are, there is a high stake in terms of, uh, of money, basically. And then we uh, took this and, uh, and analyzed how do the developers of the Ethereum community update their dependencies. How often do they do it? And we, uh, we found that uh, there are many uh, space for improvement in the, for them, even for this project, which is very serious. And so the, the last uh, mitigation strategy is to clean your dependencies. And in this case, uh, by cleaning, I mean removing the dependencies that you don't, need, that you don't use, that you don't need. And uh, in this case, in the case of Java, I recommend you a tool which I developer. Uh, I developed this tool, it's called DevClean, and DevClean basically analyzes the dependency tree of your application. It's a, it's a Maven plugin. Uh, you can see the URL there for the GitHub project. And it's a pretty stable, uh, it's a pretty stable tool. Uh, it has been used in Stockholm for, for years now. And DevClean basically will give you a configuration file which, which will not contain any uh, dependency that you don't use. So it's a way to deblow the dependency tree, remove what you don't use. And uh, we also published another paper, uh, this time in the, in the journal. The title is A Comprehensive Study of Blooded Dependencies in the Maven Ecosystem. And in this paper, we analyzed the whole Maven Central artifacts. And what we found was the for an artifact deployed there, approximately in average 75% of the dependencies are not necessary. So 75% is a big number. And if this number rings a bell, please go to the paper and you will see all the details of the experiments, of the empirical experiments that we uh, performed. So uh, yes, this has been fast because I have a lot of content to throw and only 16 minutes. But uh, two takeaways. First one, very important, software supply chain attacks are real. They happen every single day. We need to know about it. There is a lot of concern in the community, in the governments. Everybody knows that this is a big issue. And we, as a bank, need to be aware of the problem. And we need to prevent the problem to happen. And for this, there are three ways. First, knowing your dependencies. You need to know which dependencies are you deploying to the clients. Second, you need to have the dependencies up to date so that the if a vulnerability happens, then the community will release patches in the form of new versions, and then we will take this version and we uh, repl replace in our application immediately. This is the way the Low4j uh, uh, vulnerability was fixed the day after of being uh, reported as a CVE. And uh, finally, uh, the, the other way is to clean your dependencies. So this is the ultimate task, is to use 
only what you know that you actually need. And, uh, and this is it.